In scriptures, the human body is often referred to as the temple of God. Yet it is quite an uncommon privilege for any soul to attain this sacred abode that houses the divine, as it is truly a blessing to be reborn as a human being. On several occasions, Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about the rarity of this phenomenon. To be reincarnated in the human world is hard. You have to have enough human quality. You have to have affinity with the parents, yeah? And with the society, with the people around which you were born. And very difficult. To be a human, you need some merit. You have done something good in the past in order to be able, yeah? <laughs> to be able to pick a human birth. As a living temple of God, the human body is fully equipped with miraculous wonders that can be awakened in those who are spiritually conscious and have complete faith in the Creator of all life. Enedia, Latin for fasting, is the human ability to live without food. Since time immemorial, there have always been individuals who can sustain themselves on prana, or the vital life force. Through the grace of the providence, inediates, people who follow a food-free lifestyle, can draw the energy from nature to nourish themselves. They live on the chi, from the ground, or from the forest, and from the sun and from the air. They make use of all that. Or they live on love, on faith alone. These individuals are known as breatharians, solarians, waterians or pranarians, and they come from all walks of life, from different cultures and all corners of the world. Indeed, the possibilities and miracles in this life as our benevolent Creator has designed for us are endless. We only need to connect within to recognize our abounding largesse as God's children. Supreme Master Ching Hai has lovingly recommended a weekly series on Supreme Master Television to introduce those individuals of the past and present who have chosen to live food-free on Earth. May their spiritual stories enthrall you. May hearts be opened and horizons be expanded. We now invite you to join us for part two of our program, Jericho Sunfire, transitioning to breatharianism on Between Master and Disciples. This program discusses the possibility of breatharianism or living without eating food, and is not a full instruction. For your safety, please do not attempt to cease eating without proper expert guidance. Hello, open-minded viewers. Today, we continue with our special feature on the Breatharian personal fitness guru, Jericho Sunfire. In this series, Jericho talks in depth about the process he went through to become a Breatharian. He did not consciously make the decision to become food-free. It just happened naturally. His journey to living solely on the cosmic energy, or prana, began with fruits. From last week's episode, we learned that one day Jericho suddenly didn't feel good and decided to just eat fruits. He felt so good after abstaining from meat and processed food that he decided to continue with his new diet. Around the seventh day, detoxification set in. For Jericho, the detoxification process began with severe flu-like symptoms, which he had to endure for an entire week. While his body was undergoing the cleansing, Jericho thought perhaps it was due to his fruit diet, so he switched back to eating cooked food. After doing so, he realized that consuming cooked food 
made him feel even worse. His struggles began as he flip-flopped between cooked food and subsisting on fruits alone. You will find yourself going out and buying the most obscure product, you know, that you can find out. You would not even normally eat if you was on cooked food, food anyway, you know, but just to get by, just to justify, well, you know what, if I get this, it'll be all right, because it's only this. You would be so craven, that addictive drive, you know, would, would just have you choose the most insane things. So, uh, I didn't have any tools whatsoever, because obviously, willpower wasn't going to do it. Without any support system, Jericho relied on his own discipline and self-knowledge to get through the challenges. Oftentimes, it wasn't easy or successful. I tried everything. I tried, you know, all, all my, you know, toughness. You know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I tried every motivational thing known to man. It just got knocked down, smashed the smithereens, didn't stand a chance. You know, my detoxification process, my uh, addiction to, f to cooked foods was just running rampant. Nothing was going to stop it, you know. So um, the only thing that I can honestly say uh, that made a dent was cleansing. Luckily, he discovered the saltwater flushes, which helped him considerably with the detoxification process. Um, the saltwater flushes for me were majorly effective. And it also blew my mind to realize the extent of filth that I had, you know, even after the seven days that I had within me. And it kind of made me realize the work I had to do. A day in the life of a fruitarian for me was, it was hell. It was hell until I found that. Also, a day in the life for me was being a victim. I'd spent so long just, you know, detoxing, cleansing, because it is a very lengthy process. Very lengthy process, indeed. And that was my most effective piece of ammunition against what I was going through. That was a little pin dot light at the end of my tunnel. Very long, dark tunnel. I can't even begin to tell, tell you how hard the process was at that time for me. Jericho believes that being a fruitarian is just the first step on a journey to rediscover our spiritual self. The process of overcoming the challenges posed by our mind will eventually take us to self-discovery and in time, self-mastery. People thinking you can go through tailing in a couple of weeks and you'll be right. It's not that way at all. You know, it's the, it's the first initiation to higher levels of consciousness. And the way to get to higher levels of consciousness is to eliminate um, what's lowering your consciousness, which is man-made processed foods. Because um, if you think about it, man-made foods is exactly that, man-made. It's got nothing to do with your body at all. Most of the time I was miserable. But again, intuitively, I was tip-top, you know. But it was the process of getting off cooked foods. Um, and I had to go through that process. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Between Master and Disciples will return in just a moment for our show on Jericho Sunfire transitioning to breatharianism. Welcome back to today's Between Master and Disciples. Let's continue with our feature on Jericho Sunfire, transitioning to breatharianism. What was it like to go through the detoxification and cleansing? 
Jericho had to get through it both on the mental and physical level. I had to deal with cleansing, I had to deal with detoxing, I had to deal with withdrawal symptoms from food, uh, conditioning to foods. You know, my brain was like, well, why can't I eat this? It's what I've always done, it's what you do. You know, all of a sudden you're telling me, no, I've got to eat fruits. Conditioning on many levels. And uh, it wasn't, it wasn't nice. Jericho underwent a whole gamut of experiences during his detoxification process. Some of the detox symptoms I went through, um, and I'm sure a lot of these symptoms were from uh, not eating cooked foods too, the whole withdrawal process, the whole, you know, addiction thing. They were uh, headaches. I wasn't a headache person, I was getting headaches. You know, the base of my neck, these annoying headaches. Uh, severely irritable. Like one time, I was literally cruising the streets for a fight. I was ready to fight anybody. Someone bumped me in the street, I was ready to fight or argue. If anybody looked at me wrong in the checkout line, argue. In my detox symptoms, mimicked uh, sickness in terms of um, flu, you know, in that initial stage. A lot of what I went through was lethargy. I was very lethargic, very depressed. And I knew it was linked to the, the process. I knew it just wasn't fruits making me sick or anything in fruits making me sick, you know. Um, I knew it was because of what I was doing and the process was bringing up these detoxification symptoms. I had little five-year-old children, you know, come to me and say, why are you so skinny? And um, that hurt me so much. I didn't deal with the whole weight loss thing very well. After having gone through the process of being a fruitarian to liquidarian, and arriving at the state of being food free, and with the knowledge that he had acquired during the entire process, Jericho is able to look back and explain his challenge with the loss of weight. The whole ego thing got to me big time. And in actual fact, what it was, was the whole weight loss thing was basically, I had uh, built up uh, water and fat over the years. What I was eating became toxic, so my body retained water to neutralize the toxicity. And you know, I had fat, and I was inflamed. And anybody that's gone raw and been flip-flopping between raw and cooked will know that you swell. You get inflamed. And um, I had so much experience with going back and forth from food here into cooked food. I knew and I saw myself in flame, just like that. I saw the effects and I recognized that I was inflamed all those years back then. It wasn't muscle, I was just inflamed, you know? And that's what I was getting rid of. When I went through tear and I gave up cooked food, I was no longer inflamed. I was no longer retaining water because there was no need. After eating cooked foods his whole life, Jericho's body now needed time to rid itself of all the toxins that had accumulated. So that's what it was. My body was releasing fluid, liquids that it had retained for so long. And if you can imagine retaining liquid for so long, can you imagine how dirty it is? And all that stuff's inside you, along with the fats, the partially digested waste, you know, toxic as heck. Stuff that's not even coming out, because I've also learned from the cleansing that not everything you cleanse comes out one time. You know, not even with the salt water flush, that's, that's why you have to do it for seven days. Our intestines are distorted because of eating cooked foods. Our organs are distorted, overloaded. So not everything comes out. Some stuff gets hidden in nooks and crannies in your intestines and never comes out you know, until 
you get shrinkage and everything goes back to its original state. Despite the challenges that he had to go through physically and mentally, Jericho never once felt he was in any danger or that he had to seek medical help. I took the weight loss like um, it was blind faith. I didn't even think about it. It hurt me. It, it worried me in terms of, you know, I don't look so hot. You know, it, it was never like a health thing. I was worried about my health because I never felt in danger. I never felt, you know, sick. Um, I felt like I was going through a process, a very extreme process, but I never felt intuitively that I was sick and I should go seek help. You know, I always felt like, you know what, ride this out, you'll be okay. You know, I always felt that. Unlike other fruitarians who had some trouble with their teeth, Jericho's experience was different. It just transformed my mouth. It was so much fresher, so much better. Uh, my teeth were firmer, you know, because I wasn't building up all that plaque from cooked man-made foods. So um, I wasn't having the problems that people were saying. And like I say, I was exposing myself to citric acid on a regular basis. But having said that, I did experience shifting. My teeth would shift because I, wasn't, I was no longer inflamed. And it was then I realized that we are inflamed at every level. You know, it's not just, you know, skin or your body, it's also your mouth is inflamed. So when everything goes down back, back to its original size, everything starts to shrink and shift. And, you know, especially with teeth, your teeth start to, to move. And I think that's where the whole pain thing comes from. I had toothaches for a limited period. In fact, as a fruitarian, my, my teeth were in better shape. I spent probably three years fruits, solid fruits, and orange juice, citrus. I juiced citrus. That was at the latter stages of fruitarianism, when I basically mastered fruitarianism, um, when I was going on to liquidarianism. And I experienced nothing but rejuvenation with my teeth, my whole mouth. At that point, a lot of my detox I'd already done the hardest part, you know, um, so everything was kind of on an on a even keel in terms of, you know, um, experiencing body odor, bad breath and stuff like that. My mouth had never felt better. It had never felt better. From fruitarianism, Jericho naturally transitioned to liquidarianism. This time, the process was a lot easier, since he had gone through most of the tough parts of detoxification during the fruitarian stage. Join us again next Sunday for part three of Jericho Sunfire, transitioning to breatharianism, to find out how he transitioned from fruitarianism to liquidarianism and eventually to breatharianism. Now, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Good People, Good Works, coming up next right after Noteworthy News. May heaven grace your life with abundance of love and compassion. For more information about Jericho Sunfire's personal fitness training program, please visit jerichosunfire.webs.com. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.